Hello, it's 9.15. I'm Julian Warwicker. Welcome to the programme. Coming up today, also ahead, we'll be talking to the family of a British man who's on death row in Ethiopia, accused of trying to overthrow the government. And now, the detention of a British man held on death row in Ethiopia for almost a year is being investigated by the United Nations official responsible for preventing torture. Andy Sege is accused of attempting to overthrow the Ethiopian government and was arrested while travelling through Yemen in June. He's the leader of an opposition party in Ethiopia and had been condemned to death several years earlier in his absence. Well, his partner, Yemi Halamariam, is here, uh, along with solicitor Rosa Curling from Lee Day and Maya Foa from Reprieve, a charity which campaigns against the death penalty, is here as well. Uh, welcome to all three of you. Thank you very much indeed uh, for coming in. Um, Yemi, to you first, when did you first hear news of events in Yemen? Um, we heard that he was abducted the next day. Um, the actual date was June 23rd uh, of last year. Uh, the next day, we f uh, th that same day, we found out that he was actually taken away by what we think is the Yemeni securities because it's still fa uh, fuzzy what, ha what exactly happened then. Um, then we thought he was actually uh, still detained in, in Yemen because there was nothing coming out of the um, Yemeni authorities. The FCO was helping us, trying to locate him. Um, and it was seven days later, um, the Yemeni ambassador um, actually admitted that they had extradited him to Ethiopia. Uh, we'll use that term extradition, but it was actually rendition because it happened that same night. Um, there was actually no legal process um, that happened. So. And what have you known about events in Ethiopia since, since then. you knew he arrived uh, there? We very little actually. Um, the um, ambassador has been to visit him three times. Um, the Ethiopian authorities are not allowing any families to visit. They are not allowing regular consular access to the UK uh, authorities. So um, we are basically, we have absolutely no idea in what condition he's being held um, or, or how well he is. Rosa Curling, what part are you playing in this case? We're representing Yemi and her family uh, in relation to a challenge to the UK government. We feel very strongly the UK government is not doing enough to make sure that Andy has returned home to his family here. They are engaging in some lobbying, of course they are, there's constant discussion, but they're actually asking for the wrong thing. We've made clear to them what they must demand is that Andy has returned home. Instead, they're suggesting that there should be a, pro a due process, they should respect the due process that's happening in Ethiopia. We have given very clear advice that that is completely the wrong approach. Andy must be returned home. This is a man who was kidnapped, has been held completely by himself in solitary confine confinement without being charged with anything yet. That He must be demanded home by the UK government. Let me just put to you what the Foreign Office is saying. We got a statement uh, from them. Uh, they told us this, that uh, they take uh, this case very seriously. Um, and uh, in, a, in a statement they sent to us, uh, the Foreign Secretary has raised this case, we're told, with the Ethiopian Foreign Minister, this on 13 separate occasions, they're saying. Uh, we've been allowed to visit uh, the three times since being made aware of his detention. Uh, the most recent visit was in April of this year. Um, a reaction to that? Well, so far, all their attempts haven't worked. We are still now in May 2015. They've been allowed access three times during that process. So clearly what they're doing is not working. He is still being held. He's still not getting proper access. They are refusing to ask for his demand to be returned home. And that's what we're saying they must now do. Uh, you were saying, Remy, that you don't know a great deal about um, how he's being treated. Is there any word that either of you know about in terms of the conditions in Ethiopia? The only thing that we know is it, it is the, f the feedback that he gave to the ambassador. I mean, and you have to remember that the securities are also present during that visit. Um, what he said to them is that he's being held in communicado. Um, it's in a, a room that's lit 24 hours um, in artificial light. He doesn't really get any natural light. Um, and he's not been allowed out uh, and access to um, outdoor is what we know. Uh, uh, and that's pretty much what we have. And just one more to both of you before, uh, Mayara, I come to you. Obviously, he is accused of something very serious, attempting to overthrow the Ethiopian government. Yes. Uh, are you both 
cast iron clear that that is completely untrue? Yep, we are cast iron very, very clear. Not only are we clear, the UK government is also very clear. We've asked for subject access requests, we've gotten the documents back, and it's very, very clear they also uh, think similar to us. So, so yeah, we're very, very clear on that. Um, my foe, let me bring you in on, on the situation in Ethiopia, the human rights situation in Ethiopia. It's a country that is growing rapidly, but there are serious questions being raised about some of the human rights that are going on in that country as well. Absolutely. What we're seeing now and what we've seen previously is a brutal crackdown on anybody who expresses dissent. Um, so you have journalists, bloggers, activists and political opponents being imprisoned, being tortured, being sentenced to death in trials that fall so far short of fair trial standards that it's, it's laughable. And as Yami was saying, you know, this case in particular has these, it, it, it's tragic, you know, you have a British national who was travelling away from his family but due to return and go on holiday to Italy with them and he gets kidnapped and they don't know where he's been, what's happened to him, he's actually been shackled, hooded and rendered to Ethiopia where he's being held and we still don't know where, the Brits do not know where he's being held, it's been nearly a year and, and there are serious suspicions of torture. Uh, when you say serious suspicions, what are they based on? based on Ethiopia's uh, human rights record. This has been well documented that, that torture is prevalent um, in, in Ethiopian prisons, that it's used as a, as a form of as an interrogation technique. And we do know that Andy was interrogated for a period of time. We also saw some videos which were aired on Ethiopian state television and they were analysed by a, by a British uh, psychiatrist and he could see even through the videos and the footage that there was evidence of a deterioration in Andy's mental and physical well-being that was indicative of potential serious trauma. Uh, Rosa Curling, if there has been torture here, what are the legal implications of that? Well, at the moment, the UK government is refusing to recognise that this is a case that involves torture, and that's one of the decisions that we're seeking to challenge. It's very well, of course, clear... we can't be sure that it does at this point, can we? Well, I, from the evidence... Well, I, I we... appreciate what you were saying, but, you know, it, it, there's, you need cast iron evidence to, to put that forward. Well, from the evidence that we have from the visitor from the ambassador, that he is being held in solitary confinement, uh, he hasn't been charged, he is clearly going through extremely is suffering a lot psychologically. Um, we don't know whether he's suffering also physically. It's unclear. Because he's not being given proper access, none of the ambassadors are being given proper access, mm. it's, that gives extra suspicion. So it's clear that the UN Special Rapporteur is concerned that this is torture. From my view, from the evidence we have, it's clear there's psychological suffering. It's clear that's being done in order to try and obtain information from Andy or to try and get a confession from him. That is, that is circumstances of torture and the UK government must recognise that and take immediate steps as a result to seek his return back to his family here in the UK. Yemi, yeah, tell me a little bit about uh, life at home at the moment and how difficult that <sighs> proved to be. It's really, really challenging, especially as the time goes on. Um, you know, like you're trying to keep... Uh, we have three children. Um, one is 15, the others are twins, eight-year-olds. Um, the, the biggest challenge is trying to keep hope alive um, and, and trying to tell them that this is something that's going to be resolved. Um, I mean, in a very rec recent incident that I can recount to you is... Um, um, the ambassador, the UK ambassador is currently here in the UK um, and, um, and I was thinking of sending some letters um, through him and I asked them to write letters um, um, to their dad and, and I think that's one of the biggest error that I felt that I did because I was like trying to um, talk, I, I thought I was trying to do something very positive, there's a, more of a guarantee that it might be delivered um, and they were just in pieces and they just couldn't finish any of the letters, especially one, uh, my daughter, um, and I kind of regretted asking them and it's really, really, really very, very difficult. Um, effectively, we are also in prison um, and um, so, so, yeah, that's what it's looking like. You have to stay strong for the the children to yes. an extent. So how, how do you how do you manage to try and do that? Um, I, I mean, luckily I have people like Rosa, <laughs> I have people like Maya, um, we have Jeremy Corbyn, our MP, who was attempting to try to go, um, did a delegation. Um, he was not allowed. Uh, that was back in February. Um, um, we have Emily Thornbury, who's also my MP. Um, so, so we do have a network of people that are trying to help us, um, that have influence. Um, 
So that helps the Ethiopian diaspora, family, um, but it's still not, we're not resolving it. It's a year later. Um, so, so it's very, very, very difficult to keep a semblance of hope um, and, and, um, and stay strong for the children, uh, as Rose, well as myself, and him as well. And because, him as well? Yeah. yeah. You know. um, Rosa, I mentioned that Foreign Office statement a moment ago. If there's, if there's somebody from the Foreign Office watching the, this conversation, what would your message be to them at this point? Please recognise that what you're doing now is not enough. You must now immediately seek and use all the leverage that you have with the Ethiopian government to make sure Andy is now brought home immediately to his family. And Maya, a final word on that and whether you think the Ethiopian government would be receptive to that kind of information. Absolutely. I think this has gone on for far too long. A British national has been kidnapped and rendered and held in, in incommunicado detention subject to a sentence of death. The UK government needs to request him to be brought home to his family. And they can. They have strong ties to Ethiopia. It is really unthinkable that this country should be giving the UK the runaround whilst the UK continues to provide Ethiopia it's the, the largest, one of the largest recipients of UK aid and there are these very strong political ties. Enough is enough and Andy, who is entirely innocent, should be brought home where he belongs. Okay. Maya, thank you very much for coming in. Thank Yemi, you. thank you. Uh, Rosa, thank you very much as well. Thank you.